Well, Tom and Vic here, and we're back on an escalator, so you know what that means. <laughs> that we're at another conference, and yeah. uh, now it's uh, we're back at NICE. This is Interactions 2024 in Las Vegas. We're at the Fontainebleau. Yeah, let's go. All right. So, Vic, we're here in the, the where are we? So one of my favorite parts of NICE Interactions, other than the keynotes, which are spectacular, is the showcase area, because this right. is where you actually get to see the stuff, right? Yeah, you get to actually talk to the people who work with it, understand it, and have insight to help you decide, is this the right product for me? Yeah, so, and, and kind of seeing it, some of the stuff's pretty hard to understand, but, right. but seeing it kind of makes more sense. So join us as we uh, take a quick tour of the showcase at NICE Interactions. Jason, it's great to be here at the showcase at Interactions 24. We're at the CX1 Empower Augmentation booth. Tell me about augmentation. Hey, look, this is a really exciting, and when I'm talking to my customers, they're always looking for ways to make their agents better, faster, provide better experiences for their customers. And what we found is the best way to do that is by putting the best agent you could possibly think of on everyone's shoulder as a co-pilot. Inside of our CX1 agent application, you know, we're having the ability to listen to every part of the conversation and provide detailed information about this particular customer and everything that they've done with us, their historical journeys. We're already keeping this in memory. So being able to you know, pay uh, attention to behaviors that this customer has done has given me as an agent the ability to provide a hyper-personalized experience. And not only that hyper-personalized experience for an overall customer satisfaction, but specifically tying any of the specific questions that a customer is asking to content that my organization has created, has curated, and is current, right? This is really, really critical. And making sure that every agent has access to the information makes them more effective, faster, and on every single interaction giving me information about what they've done, how they're feeling about their experience with me, as well as you know, the ability to rapidly answer any of the questions that they have. All of that being tracked and giving me as an agent leeway to handle the customer without having to worry about things like taking notes. We're letting the machine handle all of this stuff. So taking advantage of our ability to know what's going on, understand everything about the business, and helping this agent service this need right now in the moment. I've, I, I've been in the contact center space for a really long time. I remember talking about this 20 years ago. It's yeah. like, hey, wouldn't it be cool yeah. if? And now, if, to be able to, be, to deliver this stuff with really, really simple uh, me mechanisms for yeah. customers to consume it, Oh, this is a game changer. So Chris, it's great to see you here today at Nice Interactions. We're at the Empower Automation booth. Uh, what is Empower Automation? So we've got two solutions that make up our automation we call uh, Enlighten XO and Smart Assist or Autopilot. So Autopilot is the ability to ingest call recordings or chat transcripts from a brand, take that information and let the brand know which of those intents are highly automatable. We take that information and we import it into our conversational flow and build out the automational flow automatically. Yeah, what's an example? Make a payment, okay. change of address, something like that. That's something that's highly transactional um, that you can take easily off of the agent's table, save them some time and let them do some high valued uh, agent work. In the old days, you'd, you'd get 20, 30 people in a conference yeah. room, you spend two or three weeks deciding on what intents to automate, There'd be some arguments, people would want to do one and over another. Then once you decided what intents to automate, you'd have to then figure out what are the utterances that customers would state to then get to that intent. What we're using is we're using our AI models to determine 
which intents are automatable based on real live customer data between an agent and a customer. So we're using a data-driven approach as opposed to guesswork, which is what used to be done in the past. What factors might they take into account when looking at automation other than just reduced you know, uh, agent activity? Absolutely. Typically, you're looking for uh, automation that is something that's highly transactional, okay. something where the agent um, fulfilled the obligation to the customer. So if a caller calls in and says, I want to do something, if they didn't fulfill that obligation on a regular basis, that's probably not an automatable experience. If they said they called in and they do, for example, change of address, and they went through and they fulfilled that obligation on a regular basis, then that's a highly automatable structure that you could probably do an automation for. Take that off of the agent's table. Awesome, thank, thank you so much. Appreciate it, thank you. Josh, it's great to be here at the Skillability booth. What, what is Skillability? Yeah, so Skillability is all about the transition of skills between a live person and an AI agent. So the idea that I have skill sets and technical capabilities that maybe a bot either doesn't have or wasn't trained to have. And so as part of that, we want to make sure that not only is the bot learning from itself and its engagements with the agent and, and that in, and environment, but also with the supervisor and administrators and their point of view, enhancing the bot's overall effect, effectiveness and efficiency. We're focused primarily on co-pilot and, and the role it plays within the organization, more specifically in its connection between autopilot and the supervisor's day-to-day. -day. Okay. So here what we're able to do now is not just monitor and as a, a customer that's going through on a phone call, talking with the live agent, but also Liam here in this case, as Liam is talking with our self-service autopilot bot named Jess. Two is I can focus in on Liam and I can notice first and foremost that Liam has some negative sentiment here. Uh, what this indicates though, is there was already a request by the bot, by Jess, for me to help out. Okay. And so what I can start to do is then first read into what's happening and why the bot's asking me for this help. The bot tried everything it could to help Liam out in this case, but Liam is just unhappy. So what I can do is now, because I know that Liam's unhappy and the, call, and the chat's been going for a really long time, I'll just go ahead and take over. I'll start responding to Liam, finalizing and finishing out the engagement so that I can get Liam to where he wanted to go. So because of the act of taking this from the bot though, the bot wants to learn how it can do this itself in the future. And so Jess reaches out to me and asks what it can do to handle these scenarios better in the future. Wow. So I can then respond to Jess and say, first and foremost, you wanna make sure that you are being empathetic. You're demonstrating that empathy because above all in self-service, I want that sentiment to be more positive. You know, the actual content we can change, mm -hmm. but the overall sentiment in the conversation, I wanna make sure that I reinforce that positivity. But secondarily, Jess is actually going to ask for some clarifications on, hey, okay, that's great. How can I answer this specific question? And I can walk Jess through my scenario and the response I gave. So this allows me to skill Jess, to skill autopilot with my own knowledge and capabilities and exchange it so that in future endeavors, the autopilot is able to deliver this without me. And so hopefully in these future conversations, I don't have to constantly pull the customer away from the bot for these kinds of engagements. Yeah, it's really amazing and, and to see how this technology has evolved. Even, yeah. Even since last year. Like, yeah, it's exactly. Crazy, so. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, great to see you. Julie, it's great to be here at the uh, Empower Awareness booth. What, what is awareness? Yeah, so awareness is really about understanding what's happening overall from a high level within the contact center and being okay. able to take action. This is our Enlightened Action solution, okay. which really is taking all of the richness of data that we have within CX1 uh, and layering a, a conversational uh, aspect to it so that we can query it, ask questions, find out answers, uh, really uh, regardless of where that data happens to be. Because of course we have amazing dashboards and reports, but uh, if you don't have that side of information, you have a new question, how do you get that answer? So with natural language, you ask a question, that data is brought together for you and provides you with the answer that you're looking for. It's really focused on the operations layer. Yeah. Um, so the, the leadership yeah. and those who are looking at more from a high level. We do know, of course, within the contact center, there are a lot of things that 
uh, every contact center is really looking out for or paying attention to, again, yeah. at that high level. And if something changes there, we really want to call that out. So it's not that we're just asking for information and searching and looking and trying to find. We also have our alerts here that are okay. calling those things out to me. It's going to pull up the data that this um, particular uh, alert was based on. So you can see here, I have my volume next to my knowledge availability, yeah. our fourth most common call driver here, free streaming service. Yeah. Now people want to know about it, but we don't have the knowledge in our knowledge base in order to assist our agents. Okay. So now that they've found those responses, we do actually have the answers within the system, okay. but we need to pull it out and share it with them. Yep. And those answers right now are in those transcripts. So we are going to use their conversations ultimately to pull out that knowledge. So now I'm going to ask the system to write a knowledge article based on those interactions that instructs agents how to handle mm -hmm. this new contact reason. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then now it's going into those interactions, identifying some and generating a new piece of content oh, wow. based on that conversation. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty fun, right? It's, I get excited about yeah. knowledge. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. This is really exciting and I just so much appreciate you taking the time today to show us this. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for Thank stopping you. by to chat. All right, everybody, takeaways. <laughs> so we're wrapping up uh, Nice Interactions 2024. Yeah, it's been uh, a great show. Yeah. I mean, quick, uh, no, no messing around, really. Yeah, what's your biggest takeaway from this week? This year's show really was so much more crystallized yep. from last year. The stuff that they were talking about, it was like they were projecting a little forward, in my opinion, mm -hmm. whereas this year, it really feels like they're really delivering some of the promises they made last year. And it's exciting. I mean, they, they have a really great uh, unified vision for how to integrate uh, AI into customer experience. Yeah, I mean, I think the key is differentiation, you know, because you've got other competitors out there, you've kind of got the uh, build it, you know, DIY, you know, yeah. companies that just get chat GPT and think they can build this and yeah. it's obviously pretty complex, but for me it's about just continually innovating. Uh, and, and a great example of that is, you know, we've talked a lot about um, AI augmenting agents and, yeah. you know, and, they, and Barack in the keynote kind of flipped that around and, um, and, and said it's actually going to be humans that are augmenting AI. Yeah. And so, that's a key switch. yeah, um, and then I like the skillability, that's a new word mm -hmm. for us, like yeah. we needed another word, yeah, but another but that, that yeah. concept of um, giving feedback to a bot, so if, we, if a if a AI assistant fails, yeah. to be able, the, the assistant actually asks a question to the agent, you know, what could I have done better to contain this, this interaction? Yeah. Does that just level, next level thinking that NICE continues to really push the envelope and, and makes them such an exciting company well, I think all the work that they've done to lay the groundwork, yeah. uh, you know, with the different product acquisitions, the integration in, uh, I mean, they've been working with AI for, for quite a while now, mm -hmm. and so they were very poised for this generative AI wave that is washing over the industry. And you can really, there's like a real palatable feeling of interest. Mm -hmm. like. I, we talk to a lot of different customers, yeah. and uh, you know they're all just like, "Yeah, we this is this is what we were looking for," and you know, so I, yeah, kudos to uh, Nice. They, they pulled it off and mm -hmm. they took it to another level. Yeah. This one is...